Now you've heard from my song parody that interest is a fee for borrowed cash, or better said, borrowed assets. Using a more technical definition, it is a fee charged by someone who lends money to someone who borrows money. And an interest rate is the rate at which that fee is charged. If interest rates are low, a person who is saving money and depositing it in a savings account at a bank receives a lower interest rate or fee for lending that money to the bank in the first place. On the other hand, because they are paying the depositor less interest on their savings account, the bank can loan out that money to a consumer who needs to borrow it. In other words, lower interest rates generally make savers sad, but consumers happy. If interest rates are high, however, the saver who deposited their money in the savings account is getting good return, but the consumer who wanted to borrow that money has to pay a lot more. So high interest rates make savers happy, but consumers sad. But how are interest rates determined? Well, this is where the Federal Reserve comes in. The Federal Reserve Bank is a central banking system that sets the monetary policy in the United States. One thing they are in charge of is influencing the direction of interest rates. And a way in which they are able to influence this direction is through changing the money supply. So why would the Fed want to change interest rates? Well, let's look at an example that is very similar to what we are experiencing right now. Assume the economy is contracting rapidly. From a monetary standpoint, what should the Federal Reserve do? Well, here is what usually happens. All banks around the country have a variety of financial products, one of them being bonds. What the Federal Reserve does is it buys these bonds from banks, and by buying them, they are essentially putting more money into the financial system, thereby increasing the money supply. When there is more money in the financial system, banks are more willing to lend, and this in effect lowers the interest rates. Lower interest rates correspond to more borrowing. Households might be more inclined to borrow to buy a house, whereas firms are more likely to get the financing they need to build factories, design products, or other long-term projects. This increases investment, and in the overall scheme of things, can help play a role in boosting economic growth. But the Fed needs to be careful. Putting too much money into the financial system can create the risk of too much inflation. Prices could rise fast. Thus, the Fed has to be cautious about finding the right amount of money that is sufficient to help the economy without letting it grow too quickly. Which brings me to my next situation. What happens if an economy is growing too quickly? Well, in this case, the Federal Reserve wants to take money out of the financial system. It taps into its reserve of bonds and sells it to banks. Because banks are exchanging money for bonds, they are in effect decreasing the money supply. When there is less money in the financial system, banks are not as willing to lend. To detract borrowers, they raise the interest rates. Less money to lend is less money to spend. People don't want to borrow as much because of high interest rates, preferring to save. In fact, they would love to save their money in interest-correlated products, such as bonds and treasury bills, etc. Because they are not consuming as much and they are saving more, this helps curb economic growth. Thus, as you have learned, interest rates played an important role in the economy. And it's fair to say the changes in the interest rates over the past decade have had a significant impact on the current economic crisis. During the dot-com bubble, interest rates were relatively high. But in 2001 came the dot-com bust, and a lot of corporations went downhill. The stock market took a nosedive. Then with September 11th, the economy got even worse. Alan Greenspan, the Federal Reserve Chairman at the time, came into the picture, and he set a target rate that was extremely low. But here's the thing. He kept those rates down until 2003, and that's when investors in the giant pool of money became annoyed because the interest rates of products such as bonds and T-bills were very low. So that's when they decided to switch to newer products, mortgages. Furthermore, with the low interest rates, more people wanted to borrow. 
This caused a housing boom. Fast forward to 2004, interest rates start rising and they peak in 2006. This rise in interest rates put a strain on many subprime borrowers, particularly those with adjustable rate mortgages. As a result, many couldn't make their mortgage payments and started to default. Long story short, the housing bubble collapsed. The present situation sheds light on Alan Greenspan and his complicated legacy. When he left his post in 2006, he had presided over a period of strong and stable growth with only two major recessions during his 18 years of tenure and a record of excellent management during economic crises. Yet, the wake of the current subprime mortgage crisis has raised concerns regarding his actions and policies. For instance, the fact that he kept interest rates down for such a long period of time to combat the 2001 recession was what many economists said fueled the housing bubbles. Furthermore, in a speech at the Nat National Credit Union Association in 2004, he argued that many families would have benefited from getting adjustable rate mortgages and advocated that banks do more to offer these types of mortgages at a time when interest rates would be rising. Finally, he was a strong proponent of deregulation in the derivatives market, particularly in areas such as credit default swaps and collateralized debt obligations. We'll be learning more about these things later. To review. The Federal Reserve is able to influence the money supply by purchasing or selling bonds from local banks. Alan Greenspan was criticized for keeping the interest rates low during this period, thus contributing to a housing bubble. Coming up, we will learn what went wrong with our financial system. Thanks for watching. To learn more or watch more podcasts, visit www.subprimethemusical.wordpress.com.